boxes. It's deal or do no deal, as Demo said. Are you yes. sticking with your box? Yeah, I'm sticking with Ascend. Yes, yeah. are you sticking with your pick? I'm sticking with my pick, especially since Ascend starts on defense. And I was going to say... Ah, why are the stats not in my favor, And I was going to say Clubhouse is a defensive-sided map, but in Challenger League it's not. It's actually an offender side of map. 54% of the times the offenders are able to win the rounds on Clubhouse. Can you guess which site is the most won? CSTV or Church? Ah, uh, CSTV. It is actually bar stock. What? Oh, probably because it's not played that often. We've only seen it four times. Yeah, okay, let's. But that's not fair. If okay. You take that into consideration. That's true. Then you said CCTV, so you are right. Yay. So, well, it's a tie. I lied. I lied to you, Anne. A Walmart ban. A Thatcher ban and a Hibana ban. No Twitch ban. But yeah, back to the statistics. I lied. 50% yes. of the times it's bar and 50% of the time it's cash. So it's an equal win rate. Okay. All right. Uh, Back to the bands. Yes. Hibana, Thatcher, Ramai, and Valkyrie. Anything yes. surprising? Very surprising. The fact that the Ramai is banned. And this might open up great opportunities for Hellraisers because they were struggling with that. The, the Wamai and the, the Vel keep on coming out. I mean, both teams really were struggling with the amount of utility that they have to clear just for the sake that the Wamai is up on the board. This is going to make the Rafter Assault, for example, a lot more difficult to execute well as defenders being because you don't have these magnets to rely and you solemnly have to rely on a Jaeger and look at what Ascend is doing. They brought the Jaeger initially, but they're six picking it out to the mirror. And they're also bringing a Capitao. Which you now, which now is a valuable pick because there's no Wama in play. So such a change in pace that we see coming out. And the mirror is open. What's I happening? Like I like it. The fact that we do see the mirror uh, indeed and no Wama being in play, this will allow them to hold on to this church wall a little bit longer. But I also like the fact that we see this Capitao being brought out. However, brought? do you think that they brought this Capitao expecting it to be downstairs? No. I don't think so. However, it could be. It could be. I mean, if you if you drop from the kitchen hash, a capital can be strong as hell. You could you, you know you could smoke off, for example, the hallway. You could even fire off the hallway. It can be a very strong pick here, Ad. I'm hoping it is, because Capital doesn't get the love he deserves. Our Brazilian operator. After after we've seen at the major, the Brazilian operators deserve the love. <laughs> For sure. I have one thing that I think is very interesting is if you look at the defender lineup, the kites in play. We've seen Hellraisers play kite before, but Ascend are going to the downstairs objective and kind of leave it, leaving these hatches open for grabs because the kite is not in play. That means that the hatches should be open up a lot easier. And that could be in the favor of Hellraisers. Exodus, found an entry into Garrett. Looking to engage into a gunfight with someone in Oil Pit, but they seem to have fallen back to its site. So no real gunfight happening there just yet. And Hellraisers are taking this slow, but in the good way. They're joining out the top floor entirely to make sure there are no rumors that they have to deal with later into the round. And all these players of Ascend have seemed to retreat it back towards the site. This is where the Capital comes in handy as well. Their Mavericking, a soft hatch to hatch in stock, was not reinforced. There are no reinforcements left in the hands of Ascend. I Either. So that's a sacrifice that they're willing to take for that. The hatch and stock now open, but there's also a mirror window facing towards blue. And that should make it more difficult for Exodus to push down these stairs. Yeah, a minute and 45 seconds remaining, and it seems like on the side of Hellraisers, they're definitely going for a split push. It's enemy here being kind of pushed away from that mirror window. That's one of the nades that was thrown towards him, but hasn't really done any damage on that mirror except from give or take 35 HP. That does. A little bit, like almost another 35 HP. Um, so now it's down to, let's say, 45. That doesn't add up, Anne. My math doesn't add up. Then it would only have 30, <laughs> 40 HP. Yeah, and they've used two nades. And what have they done? Well, they forced the mirror about 30 centimeters back towards in the site. And that's not really all too much. But their mirror window isn't really being played that actively anymore. Rush now finds himself on the kitchen hatch here. A mission picking up the opening kill onto enemy. So that mirror window now should be clear. A mission trying to go for another one. There's a lot of damage onto Ravon, but not enough to finish him off. Ravon goes for the impacts. He loses that gunfight then to a mission, probably because he doesn't even have a gun holding up. So now the players around these boxes are forced back. Shade finds a Gemini replicator. 
Peter shoots it down, but that hatches it open. Now Hyde's picking up the kill into Flayers. Diffuser drops around Church. Shave with a good kill here. It's 3-3 back in man count. A mission, why are you just sprinting there? That's the question. The C4 comes out, but that C4 doesn't land. It's Mellow who gets the kill on Rush. Shade with the kill on Exodus, and it all falls down here for Hellraisers. They had the cards in their hands. They w had good cards being dealt to them because they had the opening frag, but all of a sudden it's smashing a clutch situation. One versus three has a slither of HP remaining. A little bit air would already kill him. So, yeah, and this round does go to the sand, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it does. Seven seconds on the clock. Goes for a drop. Tries to pick up the diffuser, but peeks the hallway instead. Not noticing that Mello was there as well. A strong performance, you could say, from Asem, but I think it also lacked a little bit coming from Hellraisers. Their initial push, I love to see them strongly forcing someone down that blue star's proper drone work coming out. So they didn't reveal their positions by stepping into that goo mine. Had control of that mirror window quite quickly. All those nades being tossed in, forced that mirror to step away from a mirror and then she couldn't play it actively anymore. They had that kind of control there, however it was shade to turn it back there. The fuse are being dropped on the other side, so could you say again, Hellraiser is lacking a little bit of commitment, seeing as the main take was coming from blue, but somehow the diffuser was dropped around church? What do you think, Anne? Maybe a little bit of commitment lack, yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate if you have your diffuser drop on a very different side as to where the main push is coming from. And a Maverick who... Probably just got the intel from Diana. Like, hey, there's a shade, there's a smoke at one of the last boxes. And then just rushing like that. It doesn't make it any easier, does it? It is, however, the CCTV cash hold that we're about to see here from Ascent. Question is, are they able to close this round as well? That would give them a 2 0 lead. There's um, a Thunderbird being played. And we've seen on this map how that Thunderbird can be strong, but it can also be in the advantage of the attackers. Interestingly here is that they're reinforcing off entire construction and leaving two of the garage walls open. Well, soft. Not open, but soft. They also haven't reinforced top of red. So they have one more pocketed. Does that mean, yeah, does that mean that they're going to reinforce red or do they say, you know what, we don't need that reinforced? I hope they're not going to reinforce it because <laughs> Hellraisers is already opening up the wall over here. Well, they might do it later on if they feel pressure from construction and there's a player oh, trying there to clear go. on top red. The reinforcements looking interesting so far, what we see coming out from Ascent. Last time they didn't even reinforce the stock hatch either. And now we're doing this Maverick trick the other way around. Electro Claw coming out now, making the work of this Maverick a tad more difficult. And now the wall has just eliminated those gone from like the wall. No longer exist. It already opened up because of the buck using that earlier. But Exodus finds himself on the construction door. Could put a lot of pressure on the side, but Ravon is aware of this. Yeah, probably had a sound cue that there is indeed somebody in construction. There's also a bulletproof cam, of course, aim aimed at the... Um at the Harbridge wall, which has have recently been opened. I'm liking that Hellraisers actually has some flank drones here. Could be could be very strong. They can't just walk into construction though, because well they could. There's a there's still a door, but construction walls are soft. Mellow and a mission. Mexican standoff. Who has more patience do you think, Anne? Well, I think Melu should have more patience, seeing as the time is always in the favor of the defenders. So all he has to do is wait or just bait a mission into actually doing something. However, he's choosing this wisely, just sitting still, waiting for a mission to do something. He's aware of that positioning. No ADSs whatsoever to protect his position there. So that could be detrimental as soon as a mission starts pulling out a nade. Melo just sitting still, however, and it's a mission out of spot. The feet of Melu hits the shots and gets the kill. Opening kill onto Melu, and Ravon finds himself onto low HP as well. More players gathering into construction, and this is where their main push might be coming from. Ravon spots the head, gets, gets two, you would say, but missed the shots there. Goes for the pistol peek onto the breach, getting it down onto Smash, but not enough to finish him off. Goodness, Smash survives to fight another day. Oh no, I thought that was a triple kill there. Sorry, I, I, I lost it for a second. It is a mission with the kill. Ravon does pick up his downed uh, teammate, so it's effectively a two versus two, but Rush will also pick up his downed teammate. 32 seconds remaining, and it's 
now currently again at three versus two. If he had the triple spray there, it would have been completely different. Oh no, it is uh, Rush removing the head of Ravan and it's all up to Ice. Does he have the trigger discipline? The same trigger discipline as Ravan just had, or will he just go for the kills? He gets one, can he get the second? No, he cannot. It's a mission with the return fry again. Came on, man, came on. Yeah, so a little bit of a flashback to a previous round where Hell Races failed to get a man advantage, clear man advantage against one player of his hand because it looked like they were pushing this one by one. Player jumping into the CC window gets taken off. And then you saw the Maverick jump in, not really exactly knowing perhaps where that last player was, but still managing to get that kill there. This was very interesting coming out from Hellraiser, seeing as most of the utility and the reinforcements were mainly invested into holding on to construction, and still they decided to take construction with at least three players. Had that Thunderbird there, <sighs> not and whiffed as much, then this round could have been completely different. But it's a what if. Yeah, or not if he didn't have a silencer. Then he would have done more damage and it wouldn't might have not been a down, but a kill instead. Oh no. I I thought for a second there we were gonna see an amazing, amazing flank and an amazing triple kill, but unfortunately. Yes. But have you ever played with a suppressed spear? Uh, no, I have not. It's, well, it sounds good. I have. I yes. Have. yes, it I is, have. in my opinion, one of the most satisfying sounds with it, Siege. It, it is indeed. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so funny, but it sounds really good. I mean, not always giving you the tactical advantage, but, uh, well, for Ravon, it certainly didn't give him the tactical advantage here. Curious to see if he's got that suppressor on his gun once again. But they're choosing to go for CCTV once more. They don't want to go to the tertiary bomb site. Are they, are they reinforcing construction off because... Or are they still do Yeah. They still have those reinforcements. Okay, they're doing the same, similar hold. Yes, but you know what? Like they, they leave those two garage walls open, right? You have that buck on the board, which could easily grant a uh, entry into garage. But you also have a player sitting on those rafters, and last time we saw that player even having a Kona station there. So you don't have the comfort of having that Wamai with those magnets that can protect you from a lot of grenades or a lot of flashbangs. You do have one, maybe two ADSs, but you also have that Kona station that could keep you in live a lot longer, and that's why they might not want to focus on to take in Garrus initially, because that will be really difficult to clear out that player from the rafters. It would be indeed quite a quite a challenge. We see here that uh, a mission is a is a magic with a torch. He's a, a magician with a with, with a torch. Do, do you think that they go into into uh, custom matches and actually like? practice with a torch? I mean, you have to practice anyways. Ooh, Exodus, they're barely missing the head of Melu. Gets a retreat quite safe though. Now feel somewhat pressure from that construction window as well. However, their initial hold there now getting back towards the side and that allows for Hellraiser to drone out Master Bedroom and construction completely. Looking like they're going to have another take coming from that side and the mission picks up the opening kill onto Shade. That's your smoke oh. off the board and the operator that you don't want to be having as your entry death. That's uh, that's a huge pick off and uh, oh. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that that was that was amazing. That was an amazing uh, few that we saw on Ice uh, dying there. He just ran into the grenade. Unfortunate timing there for Ice, and you know that Walmai pick, like the ban of the Walmai, huge and oh, but it's hello. mellow. Mello could be huge if he times this out correctly, but it's a drone in bathroom. Spawning his position, they know that he's going to come up these main stairs, and there's already a player looking towards that main stairs. Mello needs to win this gunfight. Otherwise, they're looking at a failed flank here. It smashes, holding the angle, gets the gunfight. Now, enemy finds himself in a 1v5. He also by the corner station, but finds a memory walking in, gets a shot, but a player onto island gets that final shot on the player on top red, and a really well-executed attack. It is a... Uh very, very. It's it's it can go either way, and an interesting uh, matchup so far. They're going back to Church and Arsenal. They probably know this in the side of Hellraisers. They're bringing the Flores, bringing the Buck for the soft destructive course, bringing the Ace and the Maverick. So enough hard breach. On the side of um, Ascent, though, I don't see a Mira. They'll probably six pick into a Mira. It is the Kate being six picked indeed to, into the mirror, but you are surprised, right? You'd rather see the Kate still being brought. 
Well, one thing that is interesting to begin with, Ascend didn't even reinforce the stock hatch, but with that kite, you can keep open those hatch or keep those hatches closed for a way longer period of time. And if I'm going to be very honest with you, I don't think that mirror window or the player behind the mirror was being all too successful holding players back from pushing in the blue all that easily. Because basically what it took them is two nades to push the mirror back a little bit. Then they had some opening into blue and could push that, force the mirror window, the mirror out of there. However, those holes being opened up around the blue walls also worked against them when Shade went for a swing there. So I'm not so sure if the mirror is going to be working for Ascent effectively, but I think that last round, if we can pinpoint out one thing that led to the round win for Hellraisers, it must have been that flank drone in bathroom. They were aware of this Jaeger crouch walking back at the main stars attempting a flank. Would that Jaeger have been able to put that flank up there, getting one, maybe two kills? That round would have gone to completely different ways. Such small things, but very important things that really determine the difference of the outcome in these rounds here. They don't have any reinforcements anymore, but the reinforcement, the, the stock hatch is still soft. So if they've used, they, they have used all their reinforcements. Interesting that they leave the stock hatch soft. That means that they probably have almost entire blue closed off again. They usually keep one of the blue uh, walls um, soft indeed. They've done that again here, the south wall. Is that for potentially, for example, if you do think that they're pushing from church that you can still make bullet holes, oh, excuse me, not bullet holes, but uh, shooting holes? Yeah, well, you had a player around Church last time who was able to drop the Diffuser in the hands of Hellraisers, a player of Ascent then. And if you have that wall soft, you can still go for wall banks if there is initial information. Let's say the mirror spots someone onto that mirror window, they can pinpoint the information and let a player in Church go for that wall bang. And they have four impacts, so you can always make a rotate, right? If you say, you know what, actually I want to have that wall open, you, can st you still can with those four impacts. You can always... Uh, um, rotate as well. It is a mission trying to get the bar hatch open here. It's not an easy task. However, he makes it look easy. Are you a bit of a magician with a torch, Anne? Haha, <laughs> no. I always tell people, don't let me play Maverick or I'll make a Swiss cheese out of your wall. <laughs> so, no, 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 no. Are well, you? Not at all, not at all. No, no. Uh, it is uh, the dirt tunnel being opened over here. And something that Pengu noted is that the dirt tunnel does get opened fr quite frequently, but there's just no pressure being uh, no pressure coming from that dirt tunnel. Like, usually people don't really walk into that dirt tunnel. So I'm happy to see Mission is actually putting that pressure, walking into the dirt tunnel, and seeing if you can get a pick somewhere. Yeah, this is where those impact might be coming into play as well, but Rafan is not in the position to perform an impact trick on the kitchen hatch. So that will be opened up by Flares, really making good use of all those Selmas as he's opened up dirt as well as the kitchen hatch. Misha now finds himself in the dirt tunnel, still has two, dro uh, two nades to play around with, but feels pressure in that extent that he needs to exit the dirt tunnel already. Play here downstairs on the main stairs, Rush here sees that mirror window. I mean, you have the Twitch Shock drones, a perfect opportunity and utility to get rid of those mirror windows, but that isn't happening just yet. I think you're about to go for an execute because the smoke grenade has been thrown out. Rush is on site and the question is, do they know that? That's one pick for Rush. Can he get a second? He's still alive though. He's still on site. It is a Rush that's still alive. He gets a double kill. It's a one versus four. Ravon has to clutch this for his teammates and he cannot do that Rush with a big, big triple kill. And yeah, and that was... That was a good drop. That was a really he, good read coming out from Hellraiser. He, he threw that smoke grenade himself. He threw that smoke grenade himself, then dropped, and was able to pick three kills off of that. Big round. Big round there from Rush. Yes, and I'm going to be very honest with you. We've seen smoke grenades work against attackers before plenty of times within this game so far, but that was a really good read coming out from Hellraisers. I was a bit concerned when we saw the Maverick retreat from the dirt tunnel, feeling as if he was that much pressure from Armory that he had to pull back from there. However, they read that Armory was clear enough to go for that drop, basically smoking off the rotate, not allowing players to be able to peek that. The Mira had no idea whatsoever. Oh. They were not even watching when Rush dropped and Rush picked up one kill, then two kills later on into that round, but that basically allowed Hellraiser to just walk onto the site. And I think maybe because you had that mission in dirt, you couldn't really play anybody at uh, AK, A cases, if we call them. Um, that's, you know, in the back towards Armory next to the dirt tunnel uh, door, actually. And because of that, indeed, um, Rush was just able to drop and get a huge triple kill. And that round, single-handedly won by Rush right there.
Yeah, and to be fair, Mission trying to show some presence in the dirt tunnel, kind of for shade off his exactly. position as well, because he was playing around the AK case earlier. He was elevated onto that small box, being on somewhat of an off angle, but the pressure from a mission forced him to get away over there, and that kind of opened up the side for Hellraiser. This is looking really solid for them. The 3 1 up on attack. Any round that, take, that they take now is going to be looking really good for them once they get onto their defensive half. Tactical timeout coming in from Ascent. And I think that's at the right time as well, because if you lose more rounds now, you're looking at a really, really difficult attack later on. And we've seen those attacks from Ascent. They're just struggling with those. Yeah, Ascent has been performing quite well on defense before. First they go up 4-2, then they went up 5-1. And now they're all of a the sudden they're 3-1 down on defense. On, okay, 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 a map that's slightly, but then ever so slightly favored in the offenders. Only by 4% though. And this is not portraying 4% when you're 3 to down 1. They are going for a gym bedroom hold this time though. Yeah, I mean, when they won Church, they had to go for CCTV. Lost CCTV twice and lost Church. And now they're going for their third bomb site, indicating that they don't necessarily feel too comfortable with either CCTV or church. And this might be that turning point that they definitely need. Had that minute of time to talk about what they want to do differently for this round, but I'm surprised to see no mirror windows being in play. I mean, if there's any side on club where you'd love to play that mirror window, it's right here and on the construction wall. This time, however, that's not happening, and Exodus finds himself in garage real quickly, yellow ping onto a possible position from enemy decides to put in that chase but enemy's already long gone he is indeed long gone but he is about to be hurt probably by exodus doesn't trust it himself enemy he also gets a sound cue for that nade uh the pin being pulled out of that grenade it is still enemy on the roam and so far he's not being pressured or anything so he has free gain it looks like However, you see Flares holding that flank drone here for Exodus. Yeah, so now good. he probably called it, but Smash does take some damage from enemy. Interesting here. Smash does get uh, get out of there alive, and that means that enemy can rotate back to site. It's not really getting any pressure uh, so far. Because Hellraiser is way too busy with trying to take, uh, take cash here, and. Yeah, but the fact that enemy's shown some of his presence makes it they need to worry about their backs, and Melo is able to pick up the first kill here through that drone hole. Rush being eliminated, and all these players still have to worry about their backs because look at that, enemy is still able to roam free around the basement. Melo has a rotator on top, red breach being open, gives an opportunity to hide behind Island, goes for a swing, but loses the gun, fight against the mission. Mission definitely being on fire so far this game, going nine in two, and taking just a little bit of damage from that engagement. 4-4, four, four, Operator count, and all the players of Hellraiser are stacked around CC, and they need to take this control real quickly. Only around a minute left to play with, and they haven't shown any kind of um, appearance yet into construction. What I like about Ice is that he was playing construction door towards Cash, trying to help his teammate, trying to hold off, for example, the rotate. Um, however, once his teammate fell, Nello fell, he decided to go all the way back to site. Who's not on site, though, is enemy. He still has a pocket at C4. Could still cause for a little bit of trouble. Has to watch out, though, because there is a smash about to go into bar. Trying to go into bar. Does he know that there's still a mute downstairs? I do not think so, because you wouldn't just be going like that, right? Would you be doing this, Anne, if you knew that there was still a mute downstairs? I don't think Risky so. business. I don't think they know where the mute is in general because he was running around the basement quite oh, no. a minute earlier. Smash just looking at the hash, trying to get those vertical lines aside, and that should get the sound call for enemy. So he has to pick up the kill onto Ice, but enemy could go huge here. He gets the kill onto the buck, and now we're back to a 3 3 man count. 10 seconds left on the board. Flayers needs to push in, gets killed, however, by Shade, and now this player walks in the side being fully smoked. Mission finds himself into gym. Exus with a swing onto the smoke, gets the kill, but time is up, and Aston win this round. It was very much needed for them. It definitely was needed for them, and it turned out that that mute that was roaming earlier did cause a little bit of trouble for them late in the game, didn't it? It was that same mute that was able to clear the buck there, and because of that, it is now Ascent who take a, a round. 3-2, still in the advantage for Hellraisers, so no cause for panic just yet, but the tactical timeout, it worked. Yeah, and I'm liking to see these switch of defenders coming out from Ascend as well. They 
no longer opt for the mirror. I mean, all the sites are open to play with. They can still go to CCTV, they can still go to church. They only one bedroom so far, so that leaves all these other sites up for place. However, I we like don't see the mirror. That's good. Uh, oh. I like the I like the line. You know why? Because the reveal showed that you have a vigil, that you have a mozzie, that you have, uh, you know, you have a mute, you have a lesion. So. What does it kind of tell you, Anne? It kind of tells you, as you can see, look at how many of them are rotating upstairs. It tells you they're going for a SFG offside basement room. <laughs> yeah, well, they're <laughs> going very for, old. <laughs> they're going for an offside hold, right? They're going for you know a roam. That's what they're going to do. Yes. So if you have a line, you can stop them. Yes, but the big difference between bringing the line and the dokumi is that vigil, on his ability, doesn't get affected by a lion. Scan. True. So the Dokubi does affect him, and they're able to effectively track down his position when they're playing Dokubi. And if they're playing Lion, they won't be able to track him down effectively, because if he's on his ability, he can still run around, and he won't get tracked down by Lion. That's the big difference between these two and I'm loving to see them switch to the Dokubi for that reason. Why do you have to be right, Anne? I was hoping, <laughs> you know, I was hoping to, to have you be the beauty and me to be the brains, but now <laughs> it's just you being the beauty and the brains, so... Uh. Okay, I'll find another job. It is still Ascent who are trailing 3-2. to two. Hellraisers now an attack and indeed bringing that Doka B and If one of the roamers gets killed off-site, that also means that they might be able to hack the camps. That's very true. However, first they need to take that control over the top floor. And there's a lot of things working against them. Looking at the Mew Gemmers that they have, looking at those Mozzie Pests. That will stop them from being able to drone effectively. They have that Dokubi to get some information onto where the defenders are. But getting this top floor control and the middle floor control is going to take them a lot of time. However, in the meantime, we see Exodus just forcing himself into the bar. Probably not being aware of the positioning of eyes. Smash with the opening kill onto Melo. That's the Vigil off the board. One of the roamers a very important roamer on the side of a sand gone and now Ravon gets called his position revealed and a lot of pressure onto his shoulders that means that uh, if Ravon goes back to side they can indeed hack the camps and uh oh it is Ravon going back to side and that means that there shouldn't be any uh, roamers anymore there still is ice ice is still uh, hiding Yes, hasn't been spotted out so far, so still gets to hang around this bathroom area here. Exodus also retreating from bar. Doesn't necessarily feel safe there. Went to drone out Legion, but his drone gets shot down. Rush now droning out the bar, and it's vile. He needs to drone out that Mazda there, otherwise this might be detrimental for Hellraisers. Smash still finds himself on the top floor, and this roam is costing a lot of time for Hellraisers He's gonna get to drunk. clear that efficiently. He is going to get... No. Oh no. Did they stop? Did he stop droning? Yes, and they're not aware he of He switched to drones, and now Smash is about to get killed, right? Surely Smash is about to get killed. Yes, he does. That's a missed drone right there, and they now know where Ice is. But, you know, Ice says, you know what? I'm going to play for my life. 55 seconds remaining. I'm just going to play for my life, and rightly so here, Anne. What else What else do you got to do if you're, play, if you're Ice right now? You just play for your life, hope that you can get another pick. He's still safe. Oh, he's being called and wall banged. 35 seconds. the safe position gets killed, however, but this is taking Hellraiser so much time that they still need to go for a side execute. Players on the side, all players on side, really. Ravon being the only one with a shallow room on the blue stairs. Rush now pushing down the main stairs. 25 seconds. This is where the smoke entrances are going to come and play as Shade still has all three of them. Only 18 seconds remaining, and they have to force themselves through the moto drop and through the. Uh, through the main stairs. It is now all four of them on the west side, and that means that Ravon is pretty safe. Flares will try to get a kill here, but it's Russia gets uh, shotgunned. It's a double kill here for Shade, and it's all up to a mission all of a sudden. It, it, wow. They just didn't have enough time. Who won them this yes. round, Anne? The Mozzie did. I'm not, not necessarily just a Mozzie, but that Mozzie pest on the floor in strip club won them that round. Exactly. That allowed for the Mazi to not be drawn out. Mazi got the kill on the buck who's trying to make those verticals. Without those verticals, you can't get breaches. Without those breaches, you can't get the main breach downstairs in church. You can't get the wall open. And you saw all those players stacked up in the hallway, looking left, right, center. They had nowhere to go. They were relying on singular doorways and hallways to force themselves through. If you have a player like Shade with a shotgun on those close range engagements where you're walking mm -hmm. through a hallway, you're going to win that gunfight every single day of the week. Yep. That wasting of time worked so well in the way of Ascent, and I'm sad to see them go to the attack in half right now, because I wanted to see more of that well-performing Ascent that we had in those last two rounds. For sure. 
Hey, you know, I'm 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 just curious. Was was Cool Aid wall was it reinforced? Because maybe it would have been better to you know. Do you mean the rush wall? Yes. Okay. Well, I call it rush wall usually. If yeah, you call it Kool Aid wall. In, in America, they call it a Kool Aid wall. Can I ask why? There's a there's a brand and it's called Kool Aid and it's like some sort of like powder that you mix yeah. with water and then you have an energy drink. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the the commercials are always like a bowl with that drink yeah. that rushes through walls. Oh, that's why right. Kool Aid. Call it, he's called the Kool Aid Man. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That's why they call Oryx the Kool Aid Man. Exactly. Yeah, I get it. I get exactly. It. So um, I'm, I'm just curious if Kool Aid Wall, it's the for the people that don't know it, it's the wall uh, next to the um, arm, uh, next to the yeah. armory, the armory uh, stairs. If you walk down Main Street, the first wall on exactly. your side. Exactly. Exactly. If that was soft, then maybe they could have opened that instead and just run ran into armory. That's Anyways, shoulda, woulda, coulda, it's Mira with the run out here, what? is it? No, it's not. Ice does take a little bit of damage, but that Mira gets, uh, yeah, gets away. Ooh, I'm liking the Monty pick. Especially for taking garage. Monty pick can be huge, but there's nobody in garage. There is nobody in garage. Well, there there's no utility in garage, rafters. but there's nobody on rafters. There's an ADS. There's a Kona station on rafters, but nobody's playing rafters. Interesting. There's a mirror window on the main breach that now gets opened up. This will lead to more difficulties for Ascent to properly breach that wall. They still have the Mew Gemmer. The Mew Gemmer now gone, but this could also mean for a mission to just open up that wall with the Impact Trick. Impact Trick being successful on that mirror window, and now Shane doesn't use his exothermic charge up until the full potential. Mission still has one of those impacts, throws it at the wall, and that does not stop the second but you exothermic have to vault charge. Now. Yes. That's the problem. I mean, unless the Maverick still does something, you have to vault. However, enemy has droned out rafters, knows that it's clear. Now probably also gets a little bit of uh, healing. He does indeed. He's at 120 HP right now. Can he walk onto site? That's the question. We'll clear all the utility though. He says, you know what? I don't need healing. Let me just clear all that. Smash and Ice about to meet each other. Oh no, the timing. Oh no, Ice, why why would you go on your drone there facing the wall as well? That's, that, that's the real question. Garage in control of Ascent, so they should still be able to do a little bit of damage here, but they have to watch out because there's quite some players still playing in that lounge area, isn't it? And yeah, exactly. You pointed out the players playing into the lounge area. Look at who those players are. Rush and Exodus, and look at what they have in their pockets. Two C4s. That could be huge if they end up getting a C4 downstairs when the diffuser is going down. Shade has that diffuser in his hands. Look at the push onto the side, but those smoke canisters are stopping him from successfully pushing so far. Players only has one of those smoke canisters still in this drop. What is pushing through the yeah. side is going to be really difficult as they has to vault over that. There's probably still a player holding Holding top red. Yeah, and they ha do have a cam below to see if there will be a uh, will be a C4 tossed. Um, however, if that cam gets cleared, then you're cleared. Uh, you're being cleared as well. They're about to vault in. They have to, right? Surely you're going to vault in. It's uh, the Monty just pushing up. He says, you know what? Let's just keep on pushing up. Rush does get a refrag on Mello, who had just picked up one of the kills. C4 is being tossed on default. Nobody's on default here, buddy. Ravon gets the kill on Flares, and that means that they also have cash control. All Defenders are offside. They've been forced downstairs, and now Ravon needs to be able to get that plant down. He 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 stopped planting, and now that the Monty dies as well, it's a triple kill from Smash, and it's all up to Ravon here. But he can't clutch it up because it's a mission that says, you know what? Let me just get that kill. Yeah, that is a huge round here for Hellraiser as they much needed that to come back from those last two rounds that they've lost. Looking at that round, it was really good that we saw those two players downstairs with the C4s. But what I love to see from Ascend as well is that they did not go for the plant on the default position. Immediately when the call for the plant came, or when they had the suspicion that a player was going for that plant, you saw that Mira just yeet her C4 onto the default spot, but no player to be found on the other side of that floor. So no damage done with that C4. However, the second time they attempted to go for a plant, there was no proper cover. It was only a Monty. Well, good luck trying to do something with that pistol because that's not really going to do a lot of damage there. So unfortunately for Ascent, that didn't really work out in their favor. However, like you said, that garage and rafters are both completely up for grabs for Ascent players. And if you look at that CCTV wall, something I found very interesting as well as usually nowadays, you don't really see it rotate from rafters anymore because you play rafters to die, really, yep. initially or in the end, but this time they had a rotate, basically allowing that month to just walk on the site. 
Was it a bait? Did they do it on purpose or did they no, just mess up in the setup? I don't think they did because the Monty was literally allowed to stand in CC door for but so like, long. like, they didn't know that there was a Monty coming. So maybe they just wanted to give a false sense of security. Like, okay, you can walk into garage and then they wanted to like start peeking from lounge. But that would be a very high risk and potentially low reward because I don't really see that being rewarding at all. Um, I, I, yeah, I think I just messed it up, right? They messed up the defense, but still won. The defense. Yeah, but that's the thing about those rafters holds, because it's always high risk, but high reward, because you're so vulnerable to the grenades and flashes and everything coming in if you don't have the right utility there. And that's why usually these days people have those head holes, because ideally you don't want to peek the breach only if you have to. With those rotates, the Monty was just able to walk onto the site. This round, however, enemy thinks he can do better with that Monty. Can have a bigger impact on this round. Bringing it down once again. And now they're looking to set themselves up for a downstairs take. Their main focuses seem to be around the dirt tunnel. Hopefully kitchen after as well as that is usually the combination that they go for. Shea feels very pressured from those winners on top main. But I don't think any of the Hellraiser's players are there. Yeah, and Flares has been droned here by enemy. Is Shade really going to try and win this gunfight up close against a, uh, I believe it's a, uh, it's a smoke indeed. Has a C4, excuse me, has a uh, shotgun in his, po in his pocket, of course, which he can always use on such close range. He has, ho however, fallen back to side and used one of his smoke canisters with only a minute of the clock. Yeah, Mello finds himself on the blue stairs waiting for a call or a drone from his teammate to get that information on where these defenders are. Submission is playing close to that third box with a mirror window on a soft wall. That means he is very vulnerable and needs that assistance from Smash coming onto the church wall. Mello there goes for a nade, doing only a little bit of damage onto a mission. Smash now finds himself very vulnerable into the middle of the blue. Goes for the swing onto Mello, does a lot of damage, but not no enough. Way. Loses the gunfight as Mello peeks it from the other side. Smash falling is the opening death onto Hellraisers. And now there's a lot more pressure onto these players all the way from the boxes. Yeah, and Mello dies there and Diffuser is still in secret. So they do have to pick that up one of these days. It is uh, now a shade that's fighting a uh, smoke that's up close and personal. An enemy is already completely onto side here. And he's feeding information to his teammates. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, enemy, no. you can stay there. But a mission gets the kill on Ravon. No <laughs> way. A mission now gets the down on, uh, on the same vigil. We'll finish him off as well. It's a three versus two situation. It's uh, three uh, players remaining on the side of Hellraisers and, well, make that one player remaining on the side of Hellraisers because that Monty does get headshotted. How is Flyers able to pick up that kill on another one? The Monty should have so much protection with the shield right in front of him, but probably peaked it in the wrong way. Beautiful shot coming out from Flyers as he's able to pick up the last one there as well. And time and time again, we see that Monty just forcing himself onto the side, but they keep on losing players on the side of him. Players that just get picked off because they sprint towards mirror windows. And the less players you have surrounding that Monty, the less you can do with that Monty, the less power and the less efficiency you can do with Monty, because the more players you have around them, the more you can do with it. It's just so unfortunate if you have a Monty in a 1v4 position, for example, exactly. where you can only rely on that pistol because it, it, it will not win a gunfight against any assault rifle or SMG or whatsoever. We are really getting in the depths of this, uh, and because it is a five versus three situation in the advantage of Hell Racers here, and uh, it's make or break season. It really is make or break season. You lose this, you're out. And you're not just out, you're out for probably a year. Who knows when the next Challenger League is? So you gotta do it here. If you're, I mean, it's a shame that we have to say goodbye to either of these two teams. I'm just hoping Ascent brings it back and we're going into overtime. That would be, that, that would be beautiful. Yeah. Wishful thinking for me, wishful <laughs> thinking indeed, because it is still Ascent trailing by two. Rounds and and they have to continue on the attack and we know that's not their strong suit, is it? No, and I mean they called that tactical timeout when they found themselves down one three round wise. That really helped them to end that defensive half in a three three split. But now Hellraisers are looking really solid on the fence, and the unfortunate thing is for Ascent, there are no more tactical timeouts left. You can't have that minute where you just gather everyone together and talk about what you need to change, because now they need to do that within these rounds, and they need to make those fast adaptations. 
There's an extra charge on the CC wall here, as that's probably quite successful. But those mirror windows are probably stall out a lot of time. Onto the construction, no real presence from a player behind that, but you can't see through the mirror, and you'll have to clear that from downstairs or from the lodgy hatch to potentially gain some control over construction. So there's no more uh, shield. Uh, no. Oh way. no! How is Smoke playing no so aggressive? And the mission also gets the kill. No way, it is uh, both the Smoke and the Mute who use their pocket SMG and look at that! Look at the kills in the mission! On the first map he was already doing really well. I think he's hungry to go back into EUL. Yeah, mission showing off a very strong performance so far as Ravan also falls. We find two players left on the side of Ascent. Shay taking no damage from that C4 as he was attempting to shoot that down. Ice finds himself on the construction window, Shay being very far away from him. And they both need to start getting some picks here. A mission goes for a very aggressive swing under the wall, gets down to Ever. Shay winning that gunfight here, and that might have been a little bit over aggression coming out from a mission. But they need to get those picks here. Exodus walking up the rafter stairs. Could potentially go for a Huge pick of Shade is not aware of his positioning. Finds himself creeping close to that window. The shield there as well. Now it's Exodus going for the swing, getting the kill. Diffuser down. Ice does not have the diffuser. One minute left to play, but needs to find four defenders to win this round. Yeah, I was saying maybe use that time for another tactical timeout because, guys, you gotta survive three rounds now. Yeah, but they're not allowing them to have this timeout. I mean, they know where. The Yana is, and what you want to do in that situation is yes, there was some overaggression from a mission, but if you l allow that Yana to sit outside the window for so long, then they can have that budget tactical timeout. Having that mirror jump out of there, then nice them some time to talk and some time together, everyone together to talk about what they want to do next round. Now they find themselves at a 3 6 round disadvantage, map point. Match point. EU Challenger League point because if you lose, you're out. That is very much true. They cannot lose a singular round. They didn't get that advantage to have that brief moment to to talk about what they need to change. I see a Monty pick coming out. Six picking it to the Dokubi. Didn't have a lot of ground yeah. in the last round because it was the opening death. Yeah, didn't have any impact uh, at all. Even, I mean, was it the smoke? Hit the smoke for so low? I mean, wow. It is, um, excuse me, it was the mute, I believe. Anyways, it is Ascend, who are ascending, they've already ascended to uh, the lower breakfast final. No, that's descending, because if you yes. ascend, you go up, and yes. if you descend, you go down. Yes. Okay, Ascend needs to ascend. step up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I wasn't going to make it any more complicated. They need to live up to their name. Exactly, they do need to live up to their name. So far, they're not. It's okay up until this moment. Because if you don't step up now, you're out. It's match point, baby. Hellraiser's up 6-3 and Ascent has to attack him. And what does Ascent not like? Attacking. Exactly. One little change I dislike on the side of Hellraiser's. They had that mirror window last time. It was open up and you saw a Thunderbird throw impacts at it. So they could stop the exothermic charges. However, this time there are no impacts to be played around with. But an open mirror window makes it really difficult for Ascend players to just safely peek this. Grenade coming out on the top. Red doing a little bit of damage C4. onto both Emission and the Flayers. No C4 being tossed out just yet, but a lot of lines that they have to be so careful for. There's Electro Claw on that breach. So this is going to be a really difficult point to clear for Ascent. And this is going to cost a lot of time for them. My goodness, my goodness. It is, however, the wall that gets opened. And again, again, you have to vault over. And it's even, it's, you know, realistically, it's maybe a step over. But hey, you know, step overs don't work here in Siege, so you have to vault over that. And if you vault, there's a flares waiting there for you. So it makes it a whole lot more challenging. There are three C4 still in play. They need launch control, simple as that. They really do need launch control on the side of Ascent here. Oh, they get the information on the player on Secret Stairs. It's Exodus to swing oh. and get the kill onto Ice. Opening kill on the side of Hellraisers. This could be huge for them as they no longer have Yana with potential nades on the board. Ravon finds himself on top of those Raptor sets. Really close to being able to enter the side. And the mission just seemed to have missed him. Looking at all these lines of sight that are being made open for him. Gets that shark drone down. So no longer information on the side of Ascent. However, he has another one. King could gain that information. But the player on Raptor stairs needs to be very careful for these lines aside. Miller taking a little bit of damage, but not enough to take him off the board. 
surely it's done, right? I mean, there's still C4s in play. There's only a minute remaining, and the, they're struggling here on the side of Ascent. I'm liking this, though, with the Maverick. Kind of... Uh, Kind of tricking uh, tricking your enemies here, but he gets smoked off now, and that's buying a lot of time here on the side of Hellraiser's and It's only 48 seconds remaining. It is a 4 versus 5 situation in the advantage of Hellraiser's. And again, I can't emphasize it enough, still three C4s in play. No, the last smoke has oh been used, no. so Mission picking up a kill on the enemy. Done. They're so worried about all these lines aside. The mission goes for another aggressive swing, but does not find any heads. Melus finds himself an entry onto the side, has a diffuser, but Revan goes down. A 2v5 situation. Melo goes for the it's swing, done. loses the gunfight. A mission with a triple kill so far. Can't done. find a fort, finds a fort. It's Hellraiser to win this game. And to still have a chance on to going on to European League. It's done. No way! Hellraiser pulls it off against all of our expectations. Wow! The, the mental game that you need to have to go from a 1-7 to actually close this out. 7-3. Go from a 1-7 to a 7-3. Losing 1-7 on your own map pick.